welcome back to another episode of Box Power Sound. I am your host, Brittany Lachey. We have the incredible founder, CEO, head designer over at Varen. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Natasia, as she just mentioned, and I'm the founder of Varen. Today is the five-year anniversary, and Amazing. it's been a long ride. <laughs> Five years is pretty crazy looking at the amount of things that you've been able to accomplish in that time. Yeah, it feels like forever, but it also feels like just yesterday. Yeah, because it, it kind of was. It, it kind of was. Time flies. Time flies. Yeah, that's yeah. that's quite an accomplishment. You should be very proud um, of, of all that you have been able to do. So what inspired you to get into the fashion industry? So I've always loved fashion from a young age. I knew I was going to do something in fashion. I didn't mm -hmm. know exactly what. Mm -hmm. So I kind of maneuvered and tried different things in the fashion industry for like 10 years before I even got into like design. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been doing it. This ain't wow. new. Yeah. Do you um, do you want to share some of the other um, jobs or roles you may have had before you got into designing? Yeah. So I actually went to school for like law, which oh, is wow. random yeah. uh, because I thought I was going to stay in Canada, mm -hmm. and I felt like the, I felt like at the time like fashion wasn't like a big mm -hmm. thing in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, if, unless I move to the states or I'm staying here, so I'm gonna do law, but I don't need school for fashion. And I did the law thing. Wasn't. It wasn't for wasn't, you. It wasn't, but my dad told me to do it and I just did it. But um, it was just like law clerk, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, I said, you know what? Right after that, I said, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to school for fashion. I went to George Brown. Nice. And I just kind of um, took all the opportunities that they had at the pro in the program. I didn't even take fashion design. I said I didn't even want to be a designer at the time. So wow. I wanted to be more in the like the business side, marketing yes. side. And um, yeah, I've been doing it forever. That's literally. incredible because even when you talk about law, like you still, it sets that foundation, mm -hmm. right? And like in your intellectual property rights and dealing with, there's a lot there. This is a huge business. Yeah. So you, that, that probably has, con it has contributed to the, your success in Everything. five years. Yes. Uh, because you had that understanding. And I think that it's important to share that as well because people can sometimes be like, well, I, I'm doing this right now, I can't do that. Look at how you were able to just weave into a new Yeah, I always career. knew, I just always knew. I'm just like, I'm gonna be working in fashion, I'm gonna work at Vogue, I'm gonna do something, but I know I'm gonna do fashion. So that was like only the only option for me. Wow. But you know, I wanted to have a backup to make some money, of course. you know. Of and, course. you know, I didn't even end up working a day in law. <laughs> I didn't even do anything with that, so. Yeah. You're exactly where you're meant to be. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal style? How would you describe your personal style? Um, yeah, so I would say I'm really like versatile. Like, mm. I just dress for like the occasion, depending on where I am in the world. I, it's like a dress up. I like playing dress up, really. So I don't have like one specific style. I'll be wearing like a dress one day and like preppy, then one day I'll like straight streetwear. And then the next day, whatever skimpy. it is, who exactly. Knows? Who knows? Yeah, it's it's whatever the occasion yeah, calls for. Whatever as I you feel said. like that day. No, it's it's very true. If you're a fashion lover, it doesn't. Even if you wouldn't wear it, you can appreciate it. Yeah, you can look at someone and be like, yes, not for like me, but yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. it just depends on the day. And that's the best thing about about fashion. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite designers and insp inspirations? My favorite designers, I would say. Chanel always been number one. <laughs> number one. Um, I like Yeezy. Well, before all whatever's going on now, um, I like. What else do I like? There's so many. Of course. Um, I like Milano. I think mm. De Rouge is that what it, I think mm -hmm. that's the name. I like her story and I like her brand. Yeah, that would be like the top, top right yeah. now. Right now. The top. I have yeah. to vote for Chanel as well. Such an iconic brand, and for women who love fashion, like. Miss Miss Coco, we we got it. We got it. We got to shout her, shout her out. Yeah. Um, so you've been a business owner in the fashion fashion industry for about five years. Obviously, been in the game for for a lot longer. Um, do you want to share some of the challenges you've faced over those years and how you've overcome them? Yes. 
So there's a lot of challenges, especially just living in Toronto, being a woman of color. There's just so many obstacles, I would say, um, in like breaking into the fashion industry. It's pretty small. I feel like there, when I was starting out, it was I was doing a lot of free work. I, I did not care. I wanted to get the experience. I did whatever. I didn't care. I was hungry. I wanted to have that on my resume. I wanted to see what I liked and what I wanted to do. So I would just say, like, actually landing a job is super hard. But you do land jobs, but it's just like they don't pay you as much, I yeah. would say. And like, they, I don't know if it was me or whoever, but I feel like it's a real struggle, like, to really be get to the top in the fashion industry in Toronto. So I feel like I could go to New York. I can get top jobs, and then Toronto, it's like. It's, I guess it's such a small industry, so like the people that are there, they stay and they never leave. So it's hard. It's hard. It, it's true. It's true. It is. It's like yes, we we can get down on Toronto sometimes for the lack of opportunities, but as you said, it's just the competition is crazy. We it's a smaller area. We it's a younger uh, country. Canada is a younger yes. country, yes. and we're dealing with just a small amount of people in a small area. So it's not the city's fault, but we are working on it. Yeah. We Definitely. are working on it. Um, and, and I know a lot of people can relate to that. Fashion is hard. It's not easy. It's not, it's cutthroat. Yes, yes. And it's very, there's a lot of uh, attitudes in it and people that work in it, you know, <laughs> everybody. It's just like a certain attitude, but you got to kind of just ignore it and just move forward. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing with events, marketing, music. Yeah, any it's, industry. Really yeah, yeah. It, it can be uh, pretty cutthroat. So how do you maintain like a, your sweet disposition in such an intense industry? Honestly, I'm just confident in what I have to offer. I, I know like that. that I'm talented. I know that I have the experience and I know that I'm the shit. I'm not going to period. <laughs> I, I was gonna say it yeah. I was gonna say it she's not to she's say like I'm the shit but I just know I believe in myself so once you believe in yourself every, other people will exactly and there's nothing wrong with with saying that um, in the sense that you're you're building yourself up what you do is hard you have to put yourself out there all the time and you have to be your biggest cheerleader yeah. definitely definitely mm -hmm. um, Varen is such a, a beautiful name what is the uh, inspiration yeah. behind that so I was like doing an internship back, I don't even remember, 2000, what year was this? I want to say like 2000, like 15, 14, I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. But I was doing an internship for like Rick Owens at the time in Paris and wow. I was taking the Metro at the yeah. time and I just came across this, this station that was just like Varenne and I just like wrote it down and I was just like, I don't know, it I, just, just like, I just like that name. It doesn't like mean anything really. And it's just like, you can kind of like create something. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to create, but I was just like, I wrote it down. And then like three years later, I, I used it. So. Yeah, that's beautiful because mm -hmm. it is very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, it suits your brand so well. Uh, it, it's a perfect pick. It's a, it's a perfect pick. And as soon as you hear Varenne, you, you get an idea of what you're getting into. You're like, okay, this is getting Yeah, I made this the is name. Real. When you think of that name now, you think of my brand. Definitely. So that's the, that was the idea behind it. And you've seen now your brand is all over the world, honey. Yeah. yeah it <laughs> it's is. all over the world and mm -hmm. in uh, everybody's closets. And uh, <laughs> like, like literally, mm -hmm. all, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to Kim K. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, uh, but when it comes to, um, looking at your career and seeing like your name beside, uh, like the Royal family in Vogue and like Rihanna and Kendrick Lamar, like, mm -hmm. how did that feel? That was great because like one of my dream jobs was to work at Vogue, right? So mm -hmm. that was like, okay, I don't have to work there, but I, I've accomplished something. They know I who I am to. now. Yeah, exactly. It was amazing. It was. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, if you were to look back so far, what would you say was the moment where you're like, I made this, I could, I could do this. Have you had that moment? Um, I feel like I was always thinking that from the beginning. I was just always like, I know I have what it takes. So um, I don't really feel like there was like one specific moment, but it was just like when you see like everybody wearing it. Sometimes you'll just stumble across like random posts 
And like you'll just see like random people in like Australia, yeah. like just random places, China. I don't even know. Like it's just random. It's like that's when you feel like okay, you've made an impact. In the world. And it's bigger than you. Fill us in a little bit on a day in the life at Varan. What is your creative process like? So every day, like I wear so many hats. It's not just one hat. Um, I do the design process. I ordering product. I'm making sure the warehouse is on point customer service, which I do have people that work, but I'm always overseeing everything. So of course. there's not just one job. Every day is different. And you kind of just go figure with it them. out. Yeah, figure it out. And you know, I love organization, but some things don't always go as planned. So of course, just, you got to be ready for anything. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and business aside, what is what are some of the fun stuff you get to do at Varen in a day? I would say like, you know, photo shoots, social media, which is fun. Um, attending events, maybe like doing pop-ups around the world. That's fun. It's stressful, but it's fun. Yeah. yeah, we're we're all a little. We're missing a few screws because it's like this is crazy, chaotic, mm -hmm. but you love it. Yeah, you're passionate. I love it. I love it. I love working. I love it. I'm addicted. When's the next uh, Toronto pop-up shop? Are we are we getting one soon? Um, Toronto, honestly, I've done like two already. Yeah. I don't think I will do any like right now. I got to bring it around the world and then I can come back to Toronto whenever I really yeah. Fair. The thing that I love about uh, fashion is that it's always changing. You can pull inspiration from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, what are your some of your favorite trends right now that you're seeing in fashion? So I love like denim. That's like my number one. Yes. Always been my denim. number one like go to. I love denim right now. I'm wearing denim. Um, that's like a big trend that's really coming back, like the whole denim yes. head to toe. And I would just say like cargo pants, like you can kind of dress them up, dress them down, which mm -hmm. we have it at Varen as well. <laughs> so I think those are kind of like my favorite. But I don't think cargo is not necessarily a trend, but depends how you look at it yeah it's like a trend that never goes out of style it's just extra trendy right now yeah, it is extra exactly. trendy are there yeah. any trends you're like girl i can't wait for this to be packed up <laughs> uh, i don't know that's a good one right well we'll get we'll get back yeah. to you on that go to a party would you rather be overdressed or underdressed over always uh hip-hop or r&b 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 a night out at the club or a day party? Day party for yes. sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me think. A vacation or girls trip? Damn, I like both. <laughs> um, vacation. A vacation. Guess, yeah. Sneakers or heels? Ooh, sneakers. Really interesting. Honestly, it just depends. As I get yeah. older, sneakers. Yeah, it's but very true. I was true. always a heels person for the longest yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and especially with the type of work that you do, you're on your feet a lot. You got to be all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I love comfort now. As I get yeah. before, it was heels everywhere all the time, and now it's like sneakers. Enough. Enough I love is enough. Comfort. Yes. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Bubbly or hard liquor? Hard liquor. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, Black Friday sales or Boxing Day sales? Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday. Yeah. They're not. We're not. We're Boxing not. Boxing Day is fading away slowly, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, Manola Blahnik or Jimmy Choo? Manola. Manola. Yeah. Good call. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I don't, this is tricky for me. I don't know if it's going to be tricky for you, but Chanel or Westwood? Chanel. Chanel? Okay, yeah. fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Gucci or Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton. Louis Glare or Dior? Dior. Dior, nice. Yeah. If you had to pick one city, Toronto, LA, New York, or London, England, where would you choose? New York. New York. Yeah. Nice. Fashion capital. Yeah. Fashion yeah. capital. So, yeah. So is LA kind of. And yes. LA, in London. A, in a of. different. Different style. Uh, different style. As you see it in a, in a, in a different way. I like the weather. Way. If I could just have that weather in New York, it would be perfect. <laughs> New York? I'm from New York. I was born in New oh, York. Oh, really? So it's, mm -hmm. my brothers still live there and they're always like, oh my God, oh, 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 you live in Toronto. I'm like, you realize the weather is worse? You are dealing with more snow, more precipitation. I, I can't deal. I hate the snow. I can't deal. <laughs> uh, so, so what's next for Varen? What can we look forward to? We can look forward to um, 
you're gonna see it more, even more than next than the last time. Mm -hmm. um, more pop-ups for sure. We'll nice. definitely show some love to Toronto for sure. Thank you. Um, of course, my city. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's it for now. Yeah, I'm just for gonna now, keep. We're gonna, gonna keep, keep growing. Like there, yeah, we're gonna keep it there for now. It's a long game. You yeah. guys have to. You guys have to follow on social media to see what Miss Cia Chanel got going on with Varen. <laughs> I could ask you about your interests all day, but we are going to jump into another segment. The one and only, the great, the incomparable Stephen Conville of Chronic Relief. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Well, hello. <laughs> it is so nice to join you again and very nice to meet nice. you. I, um, I really liked my intro this time. I think you hit on all points, but um, since the new year, I have added more talents to my resume, mm -hmm. and I think you should add the thespian. Okay, okay. I see where you're going with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I will include that next time. Thank you so much. I feel, I feel, feel special. Now, um, in this segment, I'm, I'm not a guest host. Okay. okay, I am a, a, a person who's come to join you okay. and just make everything special. Okay, I okay. like that. I like so that. now you are special. It's Thank it's you. it's 2023, yes. and I've heard so much about your accomplishments, Thank you. and um, I'm really glad to be here at this time. Okay. So the first question I'd like to ask you is okay. like I, I've heard that some very very famous people have <laughs> donned your wares yes. is this true <laughs> yes it is um so was this by design or was this people just said oh wow look at that I think this would look good on this person or that person themselves said this would look good on me. I really want to try this out. Um, so honestly, like a lot of the, when I do see like celebrities wearing it half of the time, like not half of the time, most of the time, um, they just purchased it and I just see it and I'm shocked too. And I'm just like, oh, okay, sure. Like I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really like a system set in place. It's just, it just kind of happens sometimes. Okay, just kind of yeah, happens. It's, it's a different design, so. No, like yeah, no, no. Now I've seen some of those designs and I think if I were a lady and I had my current physique, I would have to go to the gym because some of them things is like, wow, like that is a piece and a half. Yeah. So um, anything for men? in the future? Not for in Varen, maybe a different brand, but I feel like Varen is just like more for the woman. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're just leaving out the dudes because I'm, I'm a fashionista, okay? Okay. Um, them them <laughs> semi style, okay? Okay. And, and, and I was thinking to myself that, um, now that I'm a thespian, <laughs> um, when I get invited to the Oscars, Oh, wow. Would you design for me? Um, I'm not really like a men's designer. I can definitely help you pick out an outfit, but right now, it might be a little too scanty it might be a for little, the Oscars. Like a little much. I I, I commit to go to the gym. That I, that that's the point. Yeah. But my 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 thing here is, and it's it, it's 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 very important. Um, you know. Um, what you did offer is that you would help me coordinate. I would definitely help you coordinate. I don't know about like designing a whole outfit because she's, you don't you don't you remember she's multifaceted? Yes. She could she could design it, she could style you, whatever you need in the house of fashion, the house of Varen. Exactly. Well, I, I would appreciate it. Now um, I am CEO of Chronic Relief and, okay. and we are a cannabis producer Amazing. here in Ontario. We grow some of the best cannabis I've been told in this country. Amazing. And um, it's, a, it's, well, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And it's something that 
I always ask, there's no peer pressure here, um, but are you a cannabis consumer? I am not. I, 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 yes. I, I, I fully understand that. Now, um, is it by choice or is it just uh, uh, a sentiment or is it uh, just, you know? It's by choice, really. By choice. I just don't prefer it, to be honest with you. You just don't prefer it's like it. to have a drink once in a while, and that's really it for me. Once in a while. Honestly, like, in high school, I've tried it. I just don't like it. Yeah, really. does it make you tired? It's not a funny... I just don't like it. Yeah, it's just like a downer. I like to be yeah, active yeah, yeah, yeah. and just, like, a lot of energy. I like to dance. I like to move around. I just feel like it's like a chill Yo, thing. Yo, I like. can't... No, I, I, no I, I'm the best <laughs> dancer after a blunt. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it just makes you, like... Yeah, you're like, I like ah. to like uppers, uppers, mm. like drinking once in a while. Like that's just my thing personally. But yes. I definitely have neck pain, so I've been in a car car accident as well. I have really bad neck pain, oh. so yeah, so it's, it's very tough. bad. It's very and you still making shit happen. So all all I can say is this: is mm. that the bud tender community in this country is outstanding. Yeah. And um, uh, in the future. Uh, you know, probably in the summertime, um, some of our own topicals will be making it out to the market. Nice. And I will make sure mm -hmm. that I buy a jar and I leave it with, with the lovely members of this team for you to try, because especially if you're designing and stuff, mm -hmm. I know you're probably in positions like for oh, long yeah. periods of time and, yeah. and, and, and you, you, yeah. you, you encounter that type of, mm -hmm. that type of pain. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think we've covered um, some very essential things. You've designed some, for some very famous people. Um, you you um, are celebrated in um, many countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I'm impressed, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Um, and uh, thank you. For, thank you for joining us yes. again. It's always a pleasure to have the the thespian on the couch well, uh, letting, yes. us, letting us know how it's done uh one thing that i couldn't get off my mind while you guys were talking it's just that we work we all work really really hard we put our bodies to the test when you're designing for hours you're sitting at a machine you're managing a facility you have a crazy team beneath you us alongside you mm -hmm. and in a lot of the work that we do we have to take the time to take care of ourselves whether it's through topicals whether it's through rest whether it's through laughing with friends. Um, and that just really resonated with me as you guys were talking. So I want to send a reminder to everybody, take care of yourselves first for your business and all your other endeavors. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.